Okay, welcome to Art Anthology. Um, you stream live, and I'll be re uh, recreating this canvas. And if <laughs> I always leave one item, are you kidding me? So I had a box. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Okay, here. Oh, here it is. But you know, I'm gonna have to use the back side. I thought I had a clear one. But this is the good thing about canvases. You can use chipboard. Sometimes I use cereal boxes. And I'm gonna cover this up anyway, so it's not gonna really matter. And um, So what I did, I, I used Mod Podge. And I just applied it with a brush, to, uh, paintbrush. And I actually gave it a good amount. And I spread it all over the canvas. So this, on the other side, I started a project and I messed up, so. It's okay to use the back side too. Even if um, you don't use paper, you can use, you know, cover it with gesso and then use texture paste for your uh, uh, background. So I just make sure and get all the edges. And this time I don't want any wrinkles in here. Usually I love the wrinkles for the texture, but um, not this time. And then what I did, see the back side, it was, I don't even remember what I was doing. So I'm just trimming off the excess paper. Okay, I'm going to set this aside because it actually d needs to dry just a little bit. And I will get the... Um, so here's what I'm going to try to recreate for the, using the minx. And I prepped the page with gesso. And let me cover up the Mod Podge. So I just gave it a quick light coat of gesso. And I'm actually going to clear off a space here. Um, so I'm going to use Enchanting, and this is one of my favorites, and then Midnight. And this is what I, I was playing around with it last night, just trying to see. I've done it before in a couple of my projects. And you can, you can you know, drop it on your page and then spread it, spritz it with water to spread it around. But I just, like I said, I was just playing. So you want to give it a good shake because there is shimmer on the bottom. And then I gave it, just trying to spread it out a little bit. And I took the dot matrix um, stencil and I placed it right on top. And then I just kind of lightly went on the on the uh, paper. I love that. I just start, you know, played around with it. 
And you could do as much as you want or as little as you want and you can just kind of see how it's still on the back of the stencil. And then even when it's it looks like it's almost gone, you could I don't know if you can see those little dots from the stencil. So I love that. I lo you can do tags with this. You can actually do um, cards. So I'm going to put that aside. And then if you have too much water that you don't want dripping or you want it lighter in color, just dab it off with paper towel. So I mean, I put way too much here. I'm wasting it, but actually this is one other thing I did with it. So I used some watercolor paper and I just kind of gave it a, you can do, you know, you can dry this and then use a stencil on it. I mean, the stencils don't have to show the pattern, and that's what I love about, you know, just being creative. So I can give this a quick dry, and then a lot of times I'll go back and use um, a stamp with different patterns. So I'm going to give this a quick dry. Anybody else see me? Hi, Jen. Can you see me? Okay, I'm just making sure. I don't know if there's a delay. I know sometimes on these classes there's a little bit of a delay. So if somebody can tell me you can see the pictures. I just want to make sure it's okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so I got this dry. And then I'm going to use some mud. I'm just get, trying to give you an idea of what you can do. Uh, let me give this a quick wipe. And I didn't get my pan of water because I didn't think I'd use, use it for soaking anything. So this is one of my favorite stencils to use. What I did was just grab some texture paste and just randomly put it on the, the layout here. And you could actually put this down first and then put the color on and then the texture paste will, you know, you'll be able to see it more, but I like this look. Uh, you, you can see that. Okay. So then Another thing you can do with the minx, I should have left my little water, um, little drops there. So I'm just going to give one little tiny drop of the enchanting and one little drop of the midnight.
and I have a little fan brush, paintbrush, which is great for um, splattering. I probably didn't have enough on there, but you know, you can do a, a lot of sp splattering or you can do a little bit. actually going to give it a little bit of water. I'm not going to finish this page, but just hopefully you will inspire you to work with the uh, minks. Okay, I'm going to put this aside so hopefully you can see the stencil. And then that, you know, I usually go in with stamping afterwards or I sometimes I leave it blank, you know, leave it without stamping. And then I do my photo matting and all the embellishments. And then here's what I do with this. So I like the stays on stamp inks. So here's this one, but you know, you can do whatever. It seems like you're messing up, but you're not. It's, you can just build on that background. I've got to make some cards here and I'm just not in the mood so I'm hoping somehow some way I'm gonna get in the mood to make some cards for my aunt so anyway that's you know you can do your embellishing afterwards and um, it's just a fun way to work with the minks okay so let's get to the um, canvas And let me, so I started out with the lightest color of the sorbet. And this is, this is uh, Pixie. It's a really pretty color with some glitter in it. Hi, Brandy. And who else am I? Yes, I'm recording. I'm recording, Stacy. <laughs> I'm really bad about that, <laughs> but I do have it recorded this time. Okay, so honestly, I don't remember the exact way I did this, but I'll give you the general idea of how. I mean, this. I loved what I did um, with just layering with the different blues I have. I'm trying to set this up so I can look at it and it wants to slide oh dear I'm gonna put it on the side of me okay so what I I just grabbed you know my canvas and I just laid I don't didn't really know what I was gonna do but I put the paper down and then I just kind of ran it through in random places there is no rhyme or reason but look at this paint oh my gosh I just love it and I think I'll stop there with this with the pixie and give my spatula a wipe off and then we'll go to the next color, and this is Baby Blue Eyes. 
And actually I might give this a quick dry. You don't have to because it dries pretty quick. Um, but there, it is a little bit damp. project is in the screenshot here. Okay. Isn't that really pretty? I just love it. Normally I don't like this color blue, but it is so pretty. This is what's so fun about using these paints is most times I don't even know <laughs> how it's going to turn out. And you can leave it as thick as you want or, you know, leave some dimension with it, a little bit of thickness. And then I'm going to give that a quick dry. think it really matters but I'm gonna go with this and this one is my favorite it's the Viridian hopefully I'm saying that right and look at that it's so yummy my favorite favorite color and you could probably use a paintbrush doing that I've not tried using the paintbrush with the paints yet I just kind of like to use the spatula or my fingers. quick dry. And the last color I used is the Hawaiian, I mean Honolulu Blue. I was thinking Hawaii. <laughs> and this is really, really pretty too.
Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. And then give this a quick dry. And then I'm, I'll look at... Oh, I'll, oh, I have stenciling to do. So I'm going to use the Bubbles stencil and use some more of the mud. Usually I give this a spray. a little bit of pressure trying to do this <laughs> under camera and try to remember what you did but it's fun I like doing this okay I'm going to give that a quick try and then I'll probably do the stamping. this so I can see it because the stamping is a kind of important because it just gives the sh <laughs> and my lighting is not letting me see it let me put it right here okay so I used this stamp and usually I'll put a piece of paper on the side here and play around just to see if I kind of can imagine <laughs> the stamp on on the on my project this part is always scary to me but you know, what are you going to do?
think that is it with this stamp. And then we have one more stamp to use. And this one just has a long quote on it. Okay, I think that is it. And then one other thing I did was I inked the edges and I think I actually had a distressing ink. I'm just going to use this. Good thing it wasn't paint or the minx that I dropped. Okay, I think that is it for the background. So, the next thing, let me uh, cut out the but um, not the butterfly, the um, my handy feather. <laughs> I have a feather die, but it's like half, the, maybe three quarters of this size, and I wanted it to be a little bit larger. So what I did was I just cut my own out, and I'll show you how I how I did that. I kind of just eyeballed what a feather looks like. started here and I just started doing some cutting. I actually had a lot of um, fussy cutting but I did, <laughs> I did that ahead of time because that would just drive me crazy doing trying to get that done under the camera. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of how I held this. Sharpie go. I just wanted a, a little line through it. Probably didn't need it, but. And then I kind of just played with the edges just to kind of curl it a little bit. Are you keeping are you keeping up Brandy? Let me check the ch chat here.
Okay. So I have those done. And my desk is actually fairly clean, but, oh, here it is. My distressor. So I have two pieces of paper for the back of the picture. And I just distressed the edges, which is one of my favorite things to do. Here's my dimensional piece. I just cut up boxes, mailing boxes that I get in the mail and use them to pop up. I don't know why my fingers get so glue, full of glue when I'm doing, doing the classes. And then I have a die cut here that I just stuck up here. flowers. And then I have these glass beads, big these match the background perfectly. And then Oh, goodness. I think I did this afterwards anyway. So I used, and this is my handy way to do it, is just to tie it until I figure out I like it. So actually, I'm just going to pull this off real quick. back here. Put another piece. Of course it doesn't work when you're working under camera, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm getting this all mixed up here. Am I making you dizzy? <laughs> okay, so that's the way. And I think I'll go this way.
it's not sticking because of the texture on the back here. And then afterwards, if I'm going to give this away or whatever, I'll come back and put a um, piece of paper back there. This. <laughs> okay, I have that straight. back down and then I'm going to put the feathers glue the feathers down start placing the butterflies and all these images down. So I have this dimensional sticky um, pop-up stickers and I like lots of dimension on my projects so least favorite thing to do is fussy cut. Okay, but it, it it's awesome when you get it done. <laughs> okay, let me put these circles down. What I did was just use some of these. And usually I put a piece of I mean, not a piece, um, put some glue on top of these so they will s stay on your page because eventually they, they seem to come off. My glue is not coming down fast enough. And then some of these, you can just leave them flat.
And then let me put these two. I have one more little butterfly to I just cut this in half. Okay, one little tiny butterfly here, and then I'm going to um, add some microbeads and regular seed beads, and that will be it. Okay. Most times I add the glue, whatever you're going to use. And then I sprinkle the beads on and the micro beads. But that is always a mess. I can't ever apply it very well with the paintbrush or even with the spatula. It just doesn't work very well. I love using beads and micro beads. So, so I have some blue. And I like to keep the the remnants of the beads. I'll just sweep them up into one container, and then I'll have a mixture of all the beads. And I, I'm sure one project will need all those colors. <laughs> did everything. I'm going to get a piece of actually my handy dandy paper plate and try to get most of the beads on here. Oh, I got about maybe a quarter of them. <laughs> anyway, this is what I do. I just kind of sweep as much as I can onto a plate or a piece of paper. Give that a shake. And I would like to show you my two pro projects. The only thing I'm missing is I didn't print another picture, so. Thank you, Stacy. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the project and uh, I hope I've inspired you to, you know, just play around with the uh, dimensional paints. They're so much fun. What I love about the paints on this project is all the shine you can see. 
I actually used another uh, glitter glass on this one just a little bit but it's so much fun I just love playing with them thank you Jen well thank you again for uh, coming by and watching me and hopefully I'll get to another project for another class soon have a good evening